Back here on Sportsline, we head right back to the phones. Line's still open, 737-7767 if you'd like to get in here. James, been waiting for a while. James, we appreciate that. Welcome to Sportsline. Uh, yeah, thanks, Steve, for taking my call. But, um, you know, what Nashville reminds me, I'm, you know, I'm an old guy, I'm retired and everything. What Nashville reminds me of, um, uh, we used to have a front room and we used to put plastic over our furniture and nobody could sit on on that furniture but the guests that would come into the house. And, uh, but we as the family, we couldn't sit on that furniture. What I'm trying to say is that uh, people that are indigenous to Nashville, it's rough on them. And I'm talking about affordable housing, affordable health care. I'm talking about the infrastructure, uh, the, the traffic problems, the potholes and everything else. But when we, we seem to be able to find monies for uh, entertainment, and I do understand that in order to make money, uh, you have to spend money, you know. But if you're not taking care of your citizens at this point, if you get in a whole abundance of people, I mean, you get a whole abundance of, say, a, a stadium, and you just get more and more and more. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of reluctant to think that you would start taking care of uh, citizens properly uh, when these things do happen. Uh, you see the governor bring big corporations, giving them uh, tax breaks, and uh, actually giving them the land. I see the governor uh, even offering invitations for people to spending uh, uh, money for them to come and visit Nashville and maybe even setting up them hotels. But the people that are indigenous to the area, uh, it seems like they're, it's hard for them to take a, uh, get a break. Also, college students, when they graduate college, I mean, uh, housing is so high that, you know, they can't even get an apartment. They got to go and uh, uh, kind of live with their parents because of the education debt and uh, things of this sort and the high cost of housing. So, I like, you made a good point. It's a balance. And I just hope that Nashville realize that there is a balance that needs to be addressed. Thank you very much. Yeah, James, you make a lot of great points there. And I think anybody who's driven lately certainly signs off or co-signs on the pothole infrastructure issue in this city. And there, there are other issues that you highlighted there. And again, we have to think about those as we move forward. I do think that from the initial analogy about the furniture in the front room with the plastic, I certainly get what you're saying. But a lot of these toys, so to speak, a lot of the stadium, the butts in the seats in the stadium, a lot of the opportunities that will come with this won't just be for the tourists who come to town. Yes, it will bring them. It will continue to bring them. And that's a huge part of the revenue and what makes this place special. I think we all agree on that. But there's also a huge number of people that would benefit who do live here. Titans fans, by and large, are Nashvillians and Tennesseans. The opportunity to be a Nashvillian and a Tennessean and go to a Super Bowl in your backyard. It won't be easy, obviously, but you'd probably have a better chance if one was in Nashville than if it keeps getting played in Miami or Phoenix. Same thing for a Final Four or the College Football National Championship game. All of those sort of things. You would have that opportunity as a citizen here. Now, that won't be every citizen, obviously, and those are the things that we're talking about that you have to be mindful of as you go into something like this. How do you strike that balance to bring that event here, to enrich your city, to enrich your culture, to bring more revenue into the city, increase the jobs, upgrade a neighborhood, do all those sorts of things, but also figure out a way to take some of that and address some of the issues. I live right downtown. One of the big issues in Nashville right now, downtown, massive homeless problem. We've got to figure that out as a city. I personally don't think it's the difference between whether we move forward and build a stadium or whether we stay put and exclude ourselves from hosting some of those events we're talking about to stand put 
I don't think that's going to be the difference of whether we solve homelessness in this community or whether we fix our roads. I think those are things that should be able to get done at the same time. We hopefully can walk and chew gum at the same time in this process. Maybe we haven't done a good enough job of that. I think that could be a fair criticism. And so we need to do better. But I don't know if it's something that can't be done if we do this. I do know what you won't be able to host if you don't do this. And I think that's where the point we're getting to right now is it's about, all right, we got to take this step forward, but how do we do it as economically responsible and as socially responsible as we can possibly be? Let's sneak one more in here. Let's say hello to Kay. Kay, good evening. Good evening. I have a question. Yeah. We've got gas over the top right now. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going to happen with Putin. Now, why don't we enclose the stadium that we have? Uh, well, cost prohibitive. If you tried to enclose the stadium that you'd have, it would be just as much, if not more, than building a brand new one. And they've come to find out and it, it still wouldn't be as spectacular as building a new one. I mean, the stadium is what it is sitting over there right now. And one of the options, and I don't know, honestly, if they did the full roof enclosure, but one of the things they looked at and really kind of jump-started this discussion about a month ago was the simple cost of what renovation would look like. And they found out it was about twice as much as they were projecting and some things they would never be able to fix because it just wasn't up to code of today. And that's where the discussion really turned, as the Titans basically said, it, it seems more practical at this point that we just build something new. And I think that's where you're at, is you'd be spending well over a billion dollars to do any sort of a renovation, which would be nowhere near perfect, as opposed to $2 billion or slightly over $2 billion to build essentially the stadium exactly the way you would want it to be. Well, I just know that everything's up in the air right now with the war going on and with prices high. And I just feel like it would be smarter to do the enclosure. And, you know, it hasn't got to be great and grand until we get for, through the next couple of years and then maybe think about something big and great and grand. Because if it's, if it's climate enclosed and all that, then all those, everything can happen there yeah. for a couple of years and then think about getting bigger and better. Okay, I appreciate that. We got to run to a break here. here. Here's the thing though. I hear what you're saying. I understand the climate out there in the world. And I think it is wise to have a little pause before you think about anything grand at the moment. But here's the deal. You're not doing anything temporary to get through whatever the conflict is in Europe, whatever the inflation run is here. You're not doing that. And then building the stadium that you want after the fact. Whatever happens here in the next few years is going to be the solution for the Titans and for Nashville for 15, 20 years, maybe longer if you do it really well. And so... That's the push here is I think you spend two and a half billion, however that gets split up from the team to the community, whatever. You got to figure out how to do that so you're not spending 1.25 billion or 1.5 billion to do it not the way you want. So 10 years from now, you're thinking, gosh, we didn't do that right. And now we need more money to come back and figure it out. That's why I think the push is now to try and do it right this time around. Gotta take a break, we'll be back.